Hello friend, welcome to another episode of Zuzukorn's Expert Mode Summoner Progression Guide. In this series, I show you my recommended summoner gear and boss progression, so that you can have a smooth experience of your own. I'm Zuzukorn and I aim to entertain you, encourage you, and offer you a place to call home. So subscribe now and join the Zuzukorn family. Last time, we started off our journey, set up some pylon spots, and managed to acquire the Snapthorn and our Finch Staff. Today, I'll show you how to set up potion crafting and how to skip forward to Hellstone, so that you can acquire your Imp Staff, which is a much more useful summon than the puny Finch Staff. With that set up, we can soon tackle the Bee Queen for our first set of summoner armor. To start off a herb farm, we will need clay pots, which are crafted at a furnace using clay blocks. These are usually found slightly below the surface, and are these red blocks right here. With lots of clay collected, craft a bunch of clay pots. I'll just go with one stack for now. Next, as you can see, I've set up a table with a bottle on it. An empty bottle is actually the crafting station for potions. This means that when you go near it, you'll be able to craft potions. To set up the farm, all you need are just some platforms. I'll just build it upwards like so. Then I'll make a nice long platform across. Next, just place down all the pots. From our exploration, we managed to find two herb bags as well, so let's open them. Oh nice, we got fire blossom and deathweed seeds as well. Those are a little rarer and harder to get at this point of the game. We will need the fire blossom for mining hellstone later on. I like organizing the herbs and seeds in a proper chest, so that when I want to craft something, I can simply open the chest and everything will be available to be crafted. So to plant them, just grab the seeds and click over the clay pot. After some time, the herbs will grow and you'll be able to harvest and replant them. So with that set up, let's go spelunking. I'm aiming to upgrade to gold armor just for the extra defense. I'll also be looking for Hermes boots as well. Without those, the Eye of Cthulhu is almost impossible. Not impossible if you're good enough, but I'm not, so I'll need those boots. If you can, try to save some gold ores for potion crafting as well. Not the bars, but the actual ore pieces. These are used to make Spelunker potions, which I'll showcase later. They make Spelunking so much easier. Craft empty bottles with glass and head over to any water body. When you're near water, you can craft bottled water using the empty bottles. This will serve as the potion base. So with that, craft some Spelunker potions with bottled water, blink root, moon glow, and gold ore. So, when you drink a Spelunker potion, it allows you to see all the ores and treasures on the screen. It also shows you chests and life crystals. It's a really handy potion to have. Being able to craft them makes your life so much easier. Look, there's a life crystal here that I probably would have never found if I hadn't used the potion. For those of you who are curious, this is what gold ore looks like through a Spelunker potion. It takes a while to get used to what each ore looks like, but you get it eventually. Oh, we have a chest on the right side here. Hopefully we can get Hermes boots. Nice, a life crystal next to the house as well. Getting our health up is really important. And in this chest we got a... Mace. You know, that's like the third one I found already. Well, let's move on. We actually found the golfer NPC, who is actually somewhat useful. Golfing can actually be used to find Sky Islands. I'll show you that another time. For now, it's good that we've unlocked him. I'll be collecting some desert fossil as well. Hopefully we can get some amber or diamonds from it. You can actually set up a gem corn farm, which is a low effort, high return money farm. Maybe we'll set that up in the next episode. Great, our first desert house. That's a nice tablet. Ooh, we got a furious thunder zapper. This is a new magic weapon that's actually pretty strong. But it's not much use in our summoner playthrough. What? Our next chest is another one, with the same modifier as well. Hmm, okay. Ooh, there's another chest here. Another one. Are you serious? Okay, this is getting quite ridiculous. Alright, some minecart track brought us to the jungle. Not much we can do here, but we can explore a little I guess. If you ever see a huge tree, there's always a mahogany chest in the middle here, with jungle exclusive loot. We got an Anklet of the Wind, a great accessory we can combine with our flurry boots. If we actually had one. 
Another type of chest you can go for are these jungle shrine chests. They are always illuminated with a green torch and will contain jungle loot as well. In this one we got Feral Claws, which boosts melee speed. So unfortunately we have an Eye of Cthulhu fight, which spawned in naturally. Honestly, we have almost no chance of beating it with no movement speed accessories and no proper arena. So let's just get it over with. If you don't want it to spawn, you can just hide underground until it's daytime. Well, yeah, we did pretty well though. I wasn't expecting to kill it anyway. The good news is, we have enough gold to make the gold armor, which is a great defense improvement. Let's also make a gold pickaxe for faster mining speed. You don't really need to make the pick, because now we're going for the Brain of Cthulhu for the Deathbringer pickaxe. We'll be doing this boss fight seriously, so craft some regeneration potions with Daybloom and Mushrooms, and an Iron Skin potion as well, which uses Iron Ore. If you want, you can make a Swiftness potion as well, which uses Cactus. Just sidetracking a little here, cause I happen to see this, hopefully we can get the boot. A mace. That's the fourth one we found in this world already. That's some horrible luck right there. Right, into the crimson we go. The crimson is still pretty dangerous, so go slow and deal with the enemies properly. That's so you won't get swarmed later on. Now to summon the boss, we have to bake three crimson hearts. Since we can't mine crimstone yet, you can use bombs to break these. If it's in an awkward position, you can make sticky bombs, which will stick to the surface you threw it on. Breaking the hearts give you loot as well. This one gave us the Undertaker, which is a gun. Not that useful, but it lets the arms dealer move in. Now I just broke the second one and we got a panic necklace. I'll build the arena first. The arena consists of a few platforms across the largest chamber here. It's kind of annoying to set up because monsters will keep bothering you. Well, it seems we have another Eye of Cthulhu fight coming up. Oh well. I recommend blocking off some of the paths so enemies don't bother us during the fight. Let's add in some campfires as well to increase our life regeneration. I want to take this time to introduce you to Torch Luck as well. In Terraria 1.4, putting the right torches in the respective biomes increases your luck, which increases your drop rate of items just by a little bit, and might slightly boost your damage as well. Placing down many torches isn't going to make the luck increase any much greater, but I'll just place a few to cover the area. Now let's buff up and break the third one to summon the boss. The aim here isn't to beat the brain, but to defeat enough creepers so that you can get tissue samples to craft the pickaxe. If you can beat the boss, great, but don't beat yourself up if you can't. Remember, the aim is to get the pick so we can skip to the Im star. The first phase is honestly harder than the second phase. All the creepers just swarm at you like this, which overwhelms you. It's a good thing that we have the snap thorn, which damages all of them also poisoning them and dealing damage over time. Just do your best to circle and avoid them. It's not that easy, but with the gold armor and buff potions, it should be manageable. I probably made too many platforms, which is why I can't escape them that well. Well, it's a good thing that the creepers drop hearts as well. It's getting pretty dangerous and too close for comfort. So make sure you build your arena platforms more spaced out compared to mine. Well, by some miracle we didn't die. When there are only 2 or 3 creepers left, I recommend taking a break and catching your breath. Use this time to regenerate a little, grab some heart, pick up a few tissue samples, and relax. The worst part of it is now over. Once you're ready, defeat the last creeper. The brain will now enrage, but it's quite easy to avoid. With the whip, we can cover a large area so we don't have to be too exact. Just whack it and keep your distance. I recommend getting in about 3 hits each time it teleports. As its health gets lower, the mirror images become more solid. However, you can actually look at your minimap. It always shows you where the real one is. With the whip, you cover a huge area as well, so it's not too difficult. Alright, we're almost there. Just a little bit more. Ah, <sighs> Great. I can't believe we did it. I really wasn't expecting to be successful, so that's nice I guess. I want to stress again that you don't have to defeat it, you just need to get 6 tissue samples, which is not too difficult. Expert mode bosses drop treasure bags, which contain the boss's loot, 
along with an exclusive expert mode accessory. We got the Brain of Confusion, which is the Brain's expert exclusive one. It allows us to have a chance at avoiding attacks, so that's really good for expert mode. Now that we're back, smelt your Crimtain ore and craft the Deathbringer pickaxe. Now we can mine Hellstone. Before that, we need to craft an Obsidian Skin Potion, which is made from Water Leaf, Fire Blossom, Bottled Water, and Obsidian. We don't have Obsidian yet, so I'll bring the components with us when we go down. So here we are. Obsidian is formed when water and lava mix, so just mine it up using your Deathbringer pickaxe. You will need a lot of it. You can also direct a pool of water into lava, which makes it much easier to mine the obsidian. Right, I've set up a small crafting station here, so let's craft the obsidian skin potion which gives you immunity to lava. Okay, here we are in the underworld. What you have to do is drink the potion then dive into lava to mine hellstone. So hellstone is this rich shiny ore, and you will need the deathbringer pickaxe or nightmare pickaxe to mine it. Keep an eye on the duration of your obsidian skin potion as well. Make sure you explore a little and bring back a hellforge as well, which is this red thing. We'll need it to smelt hellstone bars. Great, now we can finally craft hellstone bars, which require obsidian and hellstone ore. With one potion's worth, we have enough to craft the molten armor and the imp staff. Finally, we have a proper summon weapon. I'm also going to craft the lava proof bug net because I recommend setting up the brand new 1.4 Lava Fishing. I'll show you that another time. With that, we are now ready to take down the Bee Queen and acquire our first summoner armor. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon too, so you won't miss the next episode of our Expert Summoner Progression Guide. This has been Zuzucorn Games. Have a nice day, and have a great week ahead. Bye bye!